Hello and welcome. Today we're going to look at pressure in gases. Now here is a container that has some gas in it and it's a closed container so no air or gas can get in or out and we need to be able to explain why there is a pressure exerted by the gas. Now the pressure is exerted because there are molecules of gas inside the container and those impact or collide with the walls of the container. So if we drew in a couple of molecules here they move around randomly in all directions and often collide with the walls of the container. That creates a force on the side of the container. We say that there's a net force at right angles to the surface, a net force at right angles to the surface, and that's what creates a force. Now in terms of the pressure, we need two things. We need a force and we need an area. So if we've got a certain force per given area, that's what's going to cause the pressure of the gas on the inside walls of the container. We can increase the volume of the gas. In this case, we, see, we can see we've got a bigger volume where the gas is, the particles or the molecules are more spread out. There is a larger distance between the molecules. And if there's a larger distance between the molecules, that means they have to travel more distance in order to be able to either collide with each other or collide with the walls of the container. That means there are going to be less collisions per given area and there's going to be less less pressure. So less force per given area means a lower pressure exerted by the gas on that container on the left hand side. What happens if we decrease the volume? If we decrease the volume that means, well we can use this information on the left, it's just basically the opposite. So why don't you pause here and see if you can explain what happens when we decrease the volume. If not we can go that, through that together. If we decrease the volume, there is less distance between the molecules, there is less distance for the molecules to have to travel, and therefore there is going to be more collisions per given area. More collisions or more force per given area, and that's going to lead to a higher pressure. So we should be able to explain those different scenarios, and probably good to make a note of this slide here, just so that you make sure you understand it and can refer to it when you need to. What we're going to do next is look at an equation that we need to know how to use. Now luckily this is not one that we have to memorize. This is given on the equation sheet so you should be able to select and use it when needed. So we don't need to memorize it. Okay so what it says is pressure times volume is a constant. These are the abbreviations below and pressure is measured in a unit called Pascals written like this but the abbreviation is capital P small a. Volume is in meters cubed and I guess the constant then will be Pascals per meter cubed. Now what, what's this trying to say? Well if we have a gas in a container at a constant temperature the pressure times the volume will always be constant as long as you don't let gas in or out and we can demonstrate it like this. So here's a pressure and a volume. If we, were, if we multiply the pressure times the volume for the first row there 100 times 12 we get 1200 and that's our constant. Now I haven't added the units just to avoid a little bit of confusion, but what happens when we increase the pressure uh, by 50, so 150, 200, 250, what's going to happen to the constant? Well the constant is a constant so it stays the same. Now the only way that can stay the same is if the volume changes. So the volume must change if the pressure times the volume is going to remain at 1200. So in this case 1200 divided by 150 gives us a volume of 8 and as we go down these are the volumes. Now if you multiply all those together you'll find that the constant is always going to be 1200. As the pressure increases the volume decreases but the constant pressure times volume always stays the same, it doesn't change. So that's the relationship between pressure and volume of a gas in a closed container. We could have a go at a question. So let's have a look at this. We've got some gas in a container at a pressure of 100,000 pascals and a volume of 10 centimeters cubed. We're going to leave that as centimeters cubed, we're not going to convert it to meters cubed. What we want to know is the new volume and we want to know that in centimeters cubed so there's no point changing it to meters cubed then changing it back at the end again. That's the information that we've been given, we want to calculate the new volume. So let's do the first calculation. Pressure times volume is a constant what is the value of that constant? Well it's 100,000 times 10, 100,000 times 10 and that gives us 1 million which is the same as 10 to the power 6, 10 to the power 6. So that's our constant, that's our constant. Now if we change the pressure to 120,000 pascals as the question says, 
what's the new volume we need in order to maintain that constant value. So it's 120,000 times V is 1 million. And if we rearrange the equation, we'll get 1 million divided by 120,000. And that gives us the value of V. And if we calculate that, we get an answer of 8.3 recurring. And it's a volume we're looking at, so it's centimeters cubed in this scenario. Okay, so we've increased the pressure. We know that decreases the volume. As we talked about on the previous slide, the volume originally in this question was 10. We've increased the pressure, so we're expecting a lower volume, and that's exactly what's happened. Okay, so the next thing we want to look at is the idea of increasing pressure in gases, and this is for the higher tier. And this is how it affects the temperature. And one common example is that of a bicycle pump. So we could quite happily push some air into our tire. If we do it slowly, we don't really get a temperature rise, but if we do it quite rapidly and compress the air and push it into the tire, we can get a temperature rise. So if we compress the air slowly, there's not usually a temperature rise, but if we have a rapid compression, what happens is, and this is quite important to know and remember, work is done on the gas by a force. So the person pushing that down is doing work, and work, as we know in science, means transferring energy or is energy transferred. So energy is transferred by a force to the gas inside the tire. That means the internal energy of the gas is going to increase. But importantly, in terms of the temperature, that's going to increase the average kinetic energy of the particles in the gas. As you know, or you should know, the average kinetic energy of the particles in a substance is the temperature. The temperature actually means the average kinetic energy of the particles. So if we increase the average kinetic energy, we're going to increase the temperature. So rapid compression of that gas into the tire is going to cause an increase in temperature. And this is the reason why. It's to do with the work done by the force on the gas. If we have slow compression, we sometimes don't get a change in temperature. Work is still done by compressing the gas but it may not be done rapidly enough and that energy might not be transferred rapidly enough to cause an increase in temperature. Or if it does increase, it is lost at the same rate as at which it is gained. The energy is lost at the same rate at which it's gained and therefore the temperature doesn't go up any higher. So let's finish off by having one more go at a question relating to the equation that we just learned. So here's some apparatus. I'll just explain that quickly and then give you a question. We've got a pump that pushes some liquid into an enclosed area. We've got gas that is under pressure in that little tube there, and we've got a volume scale to measure the volume of the gas and the pressure meter or pressure gauge to measure the pressure. So that means we can do an experiment. We can have a whole range of different pressures uh, created by the pump, and we can look at the volume and use our equation to do a little bit of an investigation. But what we want to do is actually have a go at a question. So here's the question. Give this a go and see what you come up with, and then we'll go through it together in a minute. So this is slightly trickier in that we're using standard form, but it shouldn't be that much more tricky. So we've got 3.2 times 10 to the 5 times 6.75 gives us our constant, which is 2.16 times 10 to the 6. We've now changed the pressure, or we've increased the pressure to 3.6 times 10 to the 5. We multiply that by the volume. We can rearrange the equation like this. And when we plug that into our calculator, we get an answer of six centimeters cubed. So hopefully you got that, but if not, you can pause here and just work through and see what happened. But otherwise, if you got it, well done. That's it for the video for today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.